Well, here we go. I'm pretty excited about going to Canada to hunt bears again. I haven't been to Canada since 2019 hunting bears. And you know, I've been to Canada hunting bears a lot of times all over central Canada. So I've been busy getting ready here, getting everything packed. I'm packing clothing. I got the Tarnan clothing that I'm going to be wearing up there. And I'm packing for cool weather and hot weather although the forecast is for hot and we're talking in the 80s for the next three days and uh, then it's supposed to cool off in the 70s which will be sounds like perfect bear hunting weather the ice is not off up there yet the, the lakes are still frozen but it's going fast and I'm gonna go ahead and take a small boat um, I'm just taking a 14 foot boat that I can put in some of the smaller lakes up in the duck mountains and um, I, I like to fish too when I'm not bear hunting so I'm just going to tow that up there and hopefully the ice will be off by the first part of next week. So it's Saturday here right now, kind of drizzling a little bit, but uh, tomorrow's supposed to be nice and then um, like I said it's supposed to be warm. When I get up there I just talked to Scott on the phone, Scott Smith is the outfitter for Canadian Wilderness Outfitters. He told me that the bears are hitting the bait pretty good and it's just starting to get green up there right now and uh, you know there could be a two or three four days right there um, when the leaves just start to bud out and stuff like that where the bears really feed on them and, and it can make the baits a little tougher but he thinks uh, we're gonna be mostly past that when I arrive and I'll start hunting Monday so um, just getting everything ready to go here and I'm pretty excited about this I'm gonna be uh, putting together several videos and um, people are already asking me you know what are you looking for do you want a color phase bear are you looking for a big bear or whatever and I got to tell you really right now I'm I'm all in it for just the experience I mean I'm looking forward to sitting in a tree stand hopefully watching some bears sitting around the campfire I would like to upgrade my cinnamon bear at some point maybe that would happen on this hunt but uh, I'm just going to plan to hunt for a few days and look over some bears, hopefully. Scott says they're hitting the bait pretty well. So what bear do I want? I guess I'll know it when I see it. That's the way I'm looking at this. And I'll just bring you uh, the hunt as it develops. So I'm going to hit the road in the morning. Just uh, whenever I wake up, jump in the truck and go because everything's ready to go. And I normally wake up between 5 and 6. So it's about 11 hours up there. So I'll be there you know mid to late afternoon and uh, then Monday we'll start hunting so thanks for following along this should be good well we're about halfway um, it's noon and I got through the border okay I'm about an hour into Manitoba right now and I'm on all these highways up here are just really rough and they're like patches on top of patches that have been patched um, Canada's road use taxes are really, really high. I mean, that's like one of the reasons why their gas prices are so high. But the roads are horrible. It's, it's always been this way as long as I can remember. Um, but so anyway, I've, I've got about uh, five hours to go. And uh, I'm just kind of cruising across the farm country of uh, southern Manitoba. Getting through the border was no problem at all. I did have to stop and have my boat inspected. That was only about a 10 minute deal. Uh, they're inspecting it for invasive species and everything was clear. So um, we'll, we'll be in camp here in uh, about five hours. Well, it's 3.30 and uh, I just pulled off the highway here to uh, stretch my legs a little bit and uh, enjoy this sunshine it's 70 degrees out here it's supposed to be 80 tomorrow and uh, have a the beverage of my choice which is probably the most fattening substance on the face of the earth of course um, stopped at two gas stations uh, to use the washroom which is what they call the bathroom here in Canada and uh, neither one of them would allow me to use it so I just decided to pull off on the side of the road here I saw this little pull off area and stretch my legs a little bit and the uh, the good news is there's a lot of green on these poplar trees and I'm excited to see that I actually think it's in fact I know it's more green here than it is at home 
and which is really surprising to me but uh, it's been warmer here and uh, I think we had a lot more snow down there than they had up here this year so thanks for being along on this trip I'm really really excited about seeing what the next few days brings It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We're just getting ready to head out here. And uh, it is 85 degrees, and the ice just went off the lake up here, uh, just up into the ducks. The ice just went off two days ago. It's 85 degrees right now. And uh, we're getting our licenses. We're just kind of taking turns going in, getting everything dialed in on the computer. They're struggling with the, the uh, computer licensing system to get us all our licenses. but. We should be able to take off here in a little bit. So um, today, the first day of hunting, you know, we've just kind of hung around camp here. I did drive up uh, into the Duck Mountains and look at uh, Wellman Lake, which is one of the lakes I kind of think I'll probably try to fish if I, uh, you know, kill a bear and have a little extra time. And like I said, the ice just went off of it a couple days ago. Well, it's been windy here down at the edge of the mountains. We're on the edge of the prairie here. And uh, I went up into the mountains, and there's not a whisper of wind in here. It's just glass calm up in there. Um, but we've been hanging around here shooting our bows, getting stuff ready. Um, had a big dinner here with uh, meatloaf that was made out of bear meat, and it, went, and it was really good. And we're uh, heading out here pretty quick. Maintain your trails. All right, guys, we're bear hunting, and it's late. We got into the stand really late. I'm the last person out, and so Scott took um, Dave from Michigan out to a bait, and then it's completely, it's about 20 miles from here. And then he's going to pick me up on the way back and bring me here. And he dropped Dave and the guide, Marty, who's going to film for Dave in the ground blind. And uh, he dropped him off. And before he was even back to the truck, they texted him and said, we got one. So uh, I ended up waiting for over an hour. And then when we got out here... Um, and it's it's quite a it's a long drive out here and we got here the uh the bait that he was going to take me to he didn't like the wind and the wind is really weird and it's just really hazy because there's forest fires in alberta that all the smoke is coming this way 
and it's just really got a hazy weird feel to it and uh, the wind is just keeps changing so we abandoned that site and came to this one and drove back in here got stuck and anyway it's 85 degrees so it's not like and it's the first day it's fine the uh bears typically might not move until closer to evening when it's hot like this anyway so anyway it's a good looking spot back in here and uh still got it doesn't get dark till 10 o'clock so we still got uh three and a half hours to set hopefully i'll be able to show you some bears tonight thanks for following along Just winded me. I got a wind on the back of my neck. Just, he just hit him. It's right, blowing right at the bay. Oh boy, man, he can smell me big time right now. pushing 300. Definite Pope and Young. illegal shooting light left. He might be back and other bears might come in yet. Still very possible I could still see him or another bear or two yet. Still very possible I might regret not shooting him. <laughs> that was a really
really nice pair, definite Pope and Young. He had a big head on him, probably, probably legit 300 pounder for the middle of May. That's not something you see every day. Hey, I'm here for the experience. I, I said, I will know it when I see it. And I guess that wasn't it. I guess if you think I did the right thing by passing him up, hit the like button. And if you think I need my head examined, you'll have to tell me in the comments below. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Well, I'm just relaxing in the shade here. Uh, it's about 2.30 and so we're probably going to hit the road here in half an hour to an hour and go back out to the stands. I wanted to bring you up to speed on some things. Um, first of all, two guys got bears last night and I'm going to be able to show you some of that footage. Um, first of all, I mentioned earlier that when Dave got in his stand um, with the guide Marty, they called right away or texted um, as Scott was leaving and hadn't even left the area yet that they already had one. Well, that turned into quite a fiasco, I guess. I don't know how else to put it. Um, turns out that when Dave shot, um, he's shooting with a crossbow and they're in a ground blind and his scope was above the V um, where he was shooting, but the arrow actually went through the blind itself and although it they couldn't tell where the arrow hit the bear um, they knew that the arrow didn't fly true and the arrow actually hit the bear in the back leg below the ham so um, they didn't know that at the time they just knew the bear ran off so after Scott dropped me off he came back out there and by that time they had another bigger bear on the bait while they were waiting for Scott to come back. It was over an hour, probably an hour and a half before Scott got back there. And uh, when Scott got there, they took the blind down and uh, looked at the blood and there was very little blood. And they started to follow the blood trail around and then they turn and look back and here comes a bear towards the bait and it's the same bear that he shot. So he ends up shooting that bear again. Um, and sure enough, when they got back to camp and they got the bear skin, they found where the bear had been hit just in the hind leg. And two hours later came right back in and uh, they shot him again. So uh, they got that bear as a nice bear, uh, pretty decent male, about 200 pounds. And uh, good deal, you know, <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but that's the way it happened. So. Um, you're seeing some of that now the other one is that Todd shot a bear and he shot a real nice one he had a chocolate and a couple smaller bears and then um, he didn't really see anything until about an hour before dark hour and a half maybe before dark and then they just started pouring in and he thinks he might have seen as many as six but they kind of came and went so he knows there was at least four and uh, he shot one that we actually weighed. It's a nice male that weighed 269 pounds. So a, a really, for a spring bear, pretty, pretty really nice male. Um, also with a crossbow. So anyway, you're seeing that. Now, I just wanted to speak to the issue of why I passed this bear up last night. And obviously, um, I'm doing this video before I have put the other video up. So I haven't been able to read the comments that people are leaving on it. On passing this uh, you know really big bear last night and um, I don't feel like I have to justify it or explain it to anybody but I'm gonna anyway okay I love hunting in Canada I love spring bear hunting in Canada and have done it for years many many bear hunts and spring bear hunts in Canada and then long come COVID and I haven't been able to hunt bears in the spring at all in Canada for about four years and I really miss it and when I was thinking about coming to back to Canada hunt to hunt bears in the spring 
I think about the whole package and the experience and sitting in the woods and enjoying just being in nature, the squirrels and the birds and the Martin and the Fisher and all the other things that you can see at a bear bait and the just just the whole big picture of that type of it and also sitting around the campfire with other bear hunters and uh, riding the quads in the woods and the baiting and all of the things that are a part of what makes a spring bear hunt so much fun and at no point did I really think about the actual killing a bear so when I was able to come up here I decided I'm not going to put any pressure on myself um, I'm just going to enjoy the process I'm going to enjoy the experience and I'm going to hunt at least a couple of nights basically I decided unless there's a bear that comes in the first night that makes me say holy smokes look at that um, you just sure don't see that every day or you know something that it's like you, you probably won't get this chance again that's what it would take to make me kill a bear the first night especially we got three days of good weather here today's 80 degrees and tomorrow's going to be high of 62 but still you know nice weather probably a little windier um, so I just decided to pass that bear will I have another opportunity at him possibly I'm not even going back to that stand tonight but he uh, he could come back at some point when I can go back to that stand so that's my thought process and uh, you know I hope you understand like I said I don't feel like I need to justify it or anything like that I really just sort of feel like you deserve a explanation of why a guy passes up a bear that just about anybody else would be thrilled with and um, it's just it's just where I'm at it's me and I certainly wouldn't put it on anyone else I wouldn't um, I, I don't tell people what bears to shoot period and so that's my explanation. Anyway, we're going to head out here in a little bit, and I'll see you when we get in the stand for day number two. that footage that they shot with their iPhones of their hunts it's, it's actually kind of pretty cool to be able to actually see the hunts of the other guys that are in camp and uh, I'm gonna get my bow hung up here and even though I'm right in the sunshine I'm obviously gonna have to get the thermocell started pretty quick it's really swampy around here and uh, I like the looks of this spot though and nobody's hunted here and I they don't have a camera on it but it looks like it's been it's been getting a lot of activity all right a lot of ravens around get this thermosol going Alright, so we are, we dropped off Casey first, 
he's uh, there's four of us in camp and Casey and I haven't shot a bear the other two guys shot one the first night and uh, we dropped him off and then drove up here and I'm literally 45 miles from where we dropped him off so these baits are a long ways apart which is fine it just uh, means that uh, sometimes it get, takes a while to get picked up and they'll, the guides will split up I was dropped off here by Gord who's a pretty pretty neat guy and uh, spent a lot of a lot of his life in the bush so it, you know he's just kind of fun to talk to about bears and so forth and, and he sure likes doing this and you know it's people that you meet are some of the cool parts of doing these bear hunts so anyway I am going to get settled in here I will just say this that now it's night number two it's 80 degrees again and tomorrow high is supposed to be 62 and then the day after that it's supposed to rain with a high of 50 I think so the list of bears that I will not shoot is getting shorter and we'll see what happens here tonight but I'm going to be a little bit more tempted to kill a bear tonight than I was last night been here quite a while have not seen any bears the wind really came up uh, it's really swirling and going all over the place and I suppose it's dropped about 15 degrees so got some time to go here but it should happen tonight we should see a bear or two we'll just uh, keep sticking it out a lot of ravens zooming in and out of here interesting thing is the you can see a long ways because there's very little uh, leaf cover on the plants near the ground and which means that the bears can see you from a long ways away too so those that like to hang up and look and move back and forth and try to see everything at the bait they have a little bit of an advantage Leave it alone.
of that big sow that just went through here about a half an hour ago. Well, it's 9.15 and the end of legal shooting light is 10.03. We saw three bears tonight. We might still have a chance here. Very possible, but the first bear that came in, it was so strange. The bear was just right kind of outside the bait area, about 30 yards away, and a gust of wind broke off the top of a tree right beside me, and it came crashing to the ground right beside me, and it freaked that bear out. It went a couple of body lengths up a tree and then kind of came down and laid there for a while before it finally came into the bait and it was here for a while. And I could not tell if it was a boar or a sow. It's a two and a half year old, you know, 120, 130 pound bear. I just couldn't figure out it was a boar or a sow, but I knew I wasn't going to shoot it. And then a big sow came rolling through about a half an hour later and uh, she came just kind of rolling right into the bait and I was kind of hurrying to get the camera on and get it in position and all that and I just knew I wasn't going to shoot her but I took kind of too much risk with movement and uh, she pegged me and uh, looked up at me a little bit and walked around and just kept looking up at me and then just left and kind of thought we might see her again. And she still might come back and then uh, I thought it was really weird that there's a big old mature sow like that and she's all by herself this time of the year she should either have new cubs with her or she should have yearling cubs with her well half an hour after she left then a yearling cub came in so it's pretty, pretty likely that that's one of her cubs and he was here for quite a while and uh, ate quite a bit. Boy, he was jittery, but uh, then he left, and so anyway, it's been an exciting day, and I do have cell service here, and I haven't heard anything from uh, anybody, so I don't know if Casey has shot a bear yet or not, but um, we're just going to keep plugging away at it, and thanks for tagging along on this. I hope you're enjoying it, and we will see you tomorrow. minutes of legal shooting light left here and uh, the wind is finally starting to die down a little bit it's been really blowing and I you know bears just don't like to move as much when the winds blowing hard because it's making a lot of noise and there's a lot of movement and it just kind of knocks their ability their sis their senses it's kind of you know just kind of reduces their senses um, you know, everything's moving, the, they can't really smell well because the wind's just kind of flashing everywhere on them. I got a bear coming right here. I just kind of saw it over my shoulder. <laughs>
bear number four today. Eating some leftovers from last night's supper. <laughs> what the heck is he getting out of here like that for? But I, as I was saying, the wind is finally starting to die down, and the bears they don't like to move as much when it's windy because it's hard for them to smell. Everything's moving, so it reduces their ability to sense danger with eyesight, and everything's noisy, so they just don't move as well. And as the wind started to die down, then I guess that one kind of proved me right by just coming in as the wind's dying down. So anyway, it's really cooled off. I'm sure it's dropped 20 degrees since I got here. And I think that bear will be back. I just have to decide if it's actually a shooter for me at this point or not. Does this stuff happen to everybody or is it just me? Wow. One of them's coming back. Well, we got five minutes left of legal shooting light, and uh, uh, Scott just texted me, he's almost here. So, I think we're done for tonight. I'm kind of excited to go back to camp and see if Casey got one. I sure hope he did, 
he never shot a bear before. He's from Maryland. He's just a brand new bow hunter. Just started bow hunting. Got himself a nice new Matthews and Tarnan clothing, all the Huntworth clothing and everything, exactly everything like I re recommended. And um, he's pretty excited about this whole bear hunt situation. So if he got one, it's going to be fun to see. So I guess we'll head back to camp and we'll talk to you there. What's going on? That's right. <laughs> you got one. You see very many? That's a chocolate. That's got some brown to it. It's a little guy. Bear. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a little guy, but he, um... Big story, though. Big That's story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Big story. There's a crazy one in there. There was you... like a legitimately big bear that came in with a crease down the forehead and um, I got all keyed up. Yeah. I shot at him and yeah. uh, he got away. <laughs> he got away. I like it's like it's like fishing. He got away. He's got a lot of brown under fur. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Good nice side, huh? Nice job. Casey. What was the shot like? Like, I mean, like I uh, hit him in the spine actually. Dropped right where he was. So you saw that Casey got his bear, and it was really, really fun. He was so excited. It's his first big game animal, and the first wild animal that he's killed with his bow. So uh, he had quite an adrenaline adventure, and um, I'm not going to tell you all the details. I, I don't know that he would like it, but he, let's just say he almost ran out of arrows, and uh, <laughs> it was quite a deal. He was pretty wired, and the funnest part about it was, I think it was at breakfast this morning, he said, I can't believe I didn't know about this for the first 40 years of my life. And I loved it when he said that because, I mean, he is totally hooked he's asking me all kinds of questions about where else can you bear hunt and can he go again in the fall and and you know how many hunts a year can you do and stuff like that and as it's just pretty cool so anyway tonight i'm in a, a yet another different spot i uh was kind of leaning towards going back to the spot i was last night they gave me the option which is nice uh, but the wind is horrible for that spot. We got a northwest tonight, and it's 30 degrees colder than it was at this time yesterday. And uh, I'm bundled up with layers because uh, I'm, of that temperature drop, plus the northwest wind is pretty pretty brisk. And uh, fortunately, I'm prepared for this weather and, and for a long sit here. I'm in the stand a little earlier than normal. But it's real open in here. Um, there's a lot of good ground cover, but the leaves are just starting to come out on the ground cover. And it's a pretty mature popple forest in here, so I can see a long ways. I mean, there's places I can see 50 yards. And the baits in here um, are getting work pretty good. We, When we come in and looked at it, just to check on it earlier today, there was uh, we found a tuft of brown fur on the ground in front of the barrel. So... There's obviously at least one chocolate in here. So we're going to settle in for the long haul. Thanks for being along. Hopefully I'll be able to show you some bears. And I am no longer in spectator mode. I am switching to predator mode right now. It's really crazy how much smoke there is in the air. Uh, it's gotten a little better throughout the day, but man, it is really, it's almost like a heavy fog. Uh, you, I can actually smell smoke in the air, and there's fires, wildfires, in Alberta, which is hundreds of miles from here. Yeah, it is cold. I think it's dropped another 15 degrees or something. That north wind just rips right through here and blows the body heat right off you. It's 9 o'clock. So I got an hour left. I haven't seen a bear. And they don't like to move much in this weather, but I don't need a bunch of them. I just need one, just the right one. So we gotta endure this for another hour. And hopefully the right one will come in and stay with it.
Oh, it, I put it on the seat there. As you could see, we had quite a weather change from 85 degrees two days ago to snow last night. And I am back in the stand that I sat on day two where I saw the four bears. And just to refresh your memory, first I had a small sow come in and uh, was about to come in when that top of that tree busted off and crashed to the ground right beside me. Uh, she came in anyway and was here for a while and then I had a big sow come in and uh, was not here very long and then I had a yearling come in and it was here for quite a while and then I had a pretty decent boar come through and um, just grabbed a piece of bait and took off had a dead run like it was robbing a bank or something. Um, <clears throat> if that boar comes back tonight, I'll probably shoot it. It's a pretty decent bear. <clears throat> so the list of bears that I will not shoot is getting pretty short at this point because uh, here it is, day four. And uh, it's 40 degrees right now. Uh, the sun is supposed to come out late this afternoon. I hope it does because that should really get these bears moving. They probably were holed up through that rain that changed to snow. And uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this evening right now. So this bait is just getting pounded. There are, um, I mean, like it was just kind of wiped out when we came in here. There's not much bait left in the barrels or anything. So I'm tired of being a spectator. It's time to become a predator. Let's go get them. Well, what do you know? Six o'clock and the sun just came out. Boy, it sure feels good. The snow's all melted. I think this is a really good night for bear activity. The wind is not strong, but it's just kind of shucking and jiving and like going all over the place. One minute it's on the back of my neck, or the next minute it's on my face to the side, next minute it's in my face. So over the next couple hours, maybe it'll hopefully lay down all together. Got a super good feeling about tonight. Bear just so skittish I couldn't get my bow off the hanger.
He's not going far. <sighs> I finally got that sucker. Jeez Louise. He was just so hyper cautious. super cautious so I had a small one first I, I got I gotta tell you this from the beginning straight out that way right there is a swamp and I saw a black spot out there and I was just focusing on it and then I just saw a little bit of movement and sure enough that bear was just sitting out in that swamp about 75 yards out there just staring right up here and I couldn't move. I wanted to, really wanted to get the camera on it because I want to show people how they do this, where they just get to a spot where they can observe, and you call it a staging area or whatever, but I, I could not move. And then this smaller bear just come rolling in down the trail we drove in on, walked right in and started feeding. And uh, after a couple minutes of that, then the bear out in the swamp started to move. So I was able to get the camera on. I filmed this bear in front of me a little bit, a smaller one. And that bear out there just flat disappeared. And, but I knew it was coming because this bear kept going, looking like that. And then pretty soon he come out here and he was back there. And then he come up here and then he just laid down for a minute right there and just kind of observed this whole area. And in the meantime, the little bear just bolted. He took off. He stopped over here, and I got the camera on him for a brief second um, while he moved off. And finally, this bear moved in, um, but he something about it. Man, this bear is just hyper-cautious. And it turned, and it acted like it was going to leave. And when I drew my bow, it looked at me. And then, uh, but I was able to get my pen settled on there and got a double lung shot. Nine eighteen. Well, I guess I better get my guide in here and get this taken care of. <laughs> well, this was all worth waiting for. I'll wrap it up here in a little bit, but I'm telling you. I had so much fun, even though the weather was horrible for bear hunting, hot and then cold and all that. And I just got a lot of really good footage of bears and just had a really enjoyable hunt. And the fact that now I got a, a good bear on the ground is pretty, pretty cool. Fifty yards, probably farther than yeah. where we left off. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, the quads are that way. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. How about I take it out that way? We'll leave this deadfall. We'll go out that way. Okay. And uh, what we'll do, we'll find a spot where we can take a few pictures. Yeah, can we get him like up on this tree here or something maybe and do some pictures and video? Yeah. Well, that was a good shot. Like, look just above the yeah. elbow there. It's hard to believe he went that far and didn't have any blood. Yeah. Yeah. Like nothing. There was just one tree over there that I kind of spotted some, or two, I guess. You want me to just last Lastly. <laughs> I think he's actually a little bigger than I thought. Well, here is the bear, and uh, he's a really good one. I'm really, uh, really excited about this bear, and I just had a tremendous trip, and I'm so glad I didn't end my hunt on the first day when I had a chance to 
shoot a really nice one. I got one almost as big. I just learned so much and had a good time sitting in the stand. And it was such a great week with cool guys in camp and good guides and good food and everything about it was really good. So um, I guess we got a challenge getting this bear out of here, but fortunately we've got a couple big guys to help. So <laughs> uh, it's a really good bear with Canadian Wilderness Outfitters. Both time I've hunted here, I've shot really nice bears. So.